welcome to We The People. On the program today, a question that's being debated in many a forum. And that question is this, can free speech be absolute or should it be subjected to reasonable restrictions? Now our constitution actually underlines that there can be reasonable restrictions. But the debate gets muddied when it becomes about the role of the government. In the backdrop of an extremely volatile few weeks for India, we've seen the strife in Assam, we've seen the riots at Azad Medan, and we've seen the tragic flight of people from the northeast, from the cities of their residents, going back to their states. It has been said that the power of rumor to incite violence is a very real one, and no government can afford to ignore it. That said, we have seen a raging controversy around the government decision over the last week to 10 days to actually block a few hundred web pages and some Twitter handles. After many protests, the government insisted that it had only clamped down on web pages that actually were capable of inciting communal violence or contributing to the unrest. But is that really the case? Or is this a case of the government blurring the lines between free speech and hate speech. Is this about political censorship? Let me take this before I get to the politics of it, and it is a deeply political issue. Let me take this uh, to the Secretary uh, of Telecom. We have R. Chandrasekhar here with us. And Mr. Chandrasekhar, in many ways, uh, you've had the tough job of coming out in the last, uh, last week and having to defend uh, something that has been uh, criticized from many, many quarters. And one of the main criticisms, sir, has been that there hasn't been transparency in communicating to the people of this country that these are the kind of web pages that have actually been blocked. These are the kind of Twitter handles that we sought fit to block. There have also been instances of journalists complaining about being blocked. There are instances of hapless Twitter users saying, why me? I don't even write about uh, political stuff. And there are instances of a blogger in Karachi who first broke the news that many of the images of atrocities in Burma had been morphed, him having been blocked. Why has there been so much confusion? Okay. I think first of all, let me start by saying that uh, I believe in free speech. It is not only a part of the constitution, but the freedom of speech and freedom of expression is something which gives strength to our society. and that is what gives all the self-corrective impulses that exist in our setup. Having said that, the point that you started out with, that is this an unfettered right yeah. or is it in some way bounded? And if so, what are those bounds? And if there are bounds and we accept that there are bounds and I think by now the conventional wisdom is that there are some bounds, it is not completely unbounded. Uh, for example, globally child pornography is something which is simply not uh, tolerated. No, we but accept within a country, we accept that the yes. constitution says reasonable restrictions. Right. The question is, is that what happened this time? Right. So now the question is whether in this particular instance that right and that power that the government has was exercised in the most appropriate yeah. manner. Yeah. Was the content selected properly? Was exactly that content which was found objectionable, the one which was blocked, or did a larger amount of content get blocked because some parts of it were objectionable? Did it get blocked for a longer period of time or for a shorter period? Did it? Did you give an opportunity to the people whose content was blocked? These are some of the questions. What is your answer raised. to those? some of those questions? The answer, is, the answer is very simple. When you face a problem of public order and a law and order situation, the system depends upon the people who are in charge of maintaining law and order to make an assessment of what are the causative factors and then take whatever preventive steps are required to deal with the immediate situation on ground. That is not the time when you provide an opportunity, go into those steps and then have a protracted process because by the time you go through that whole process, there may be an impact on the ground. So are you saying in the, ru in the rush to do this because the, the priority was uh, to address the unrest, mistakes may have been made, people who should not have been blocked could have got blocked, I, are you, are you not, conceding that? I am not saying that. All I am saying is that when it is blocked, we may assume that this is all being blocked without adequate uh, information, but let us not forget that a law enforcement agency, people responsible for security are actually acting on the basis of either complaints received by some <coughs> from somebody 
or some uh, specific event which has taken place on the ground. There have been instances where uh, you know there have been content on sites which have maybe been put by some other people, yeah. but in many of these cases it does require a specific <coughs> action by the person before it, go, before it goes on to his or her site. So, the point I am making is that uh, there is a method for addressing any uh, grievance or complaint which a person may have which can be done separately. Okay. Okay. But when you are dealing with the situation, <coughs> once a law and order, a law enforcement agency has made an assessment, you go with it. You yeah. act first and then make corrections as you go along. You make need corrections. to be safe. All right, make corrections as you go along. Priority has to be what is perceived or assessed to be social unrest. Jay Panda, I don't think anybody, or maybe there are a few people who would get up and say, speech doesn't cause riots, actions do. It is the failure of the state to inspire a sense of security among its people, so don't focus on speech. But many of you, and I imagine you to be one of them, perhaps don't make that argument. You would allow for reasonable restrictions if there was a law and order problem. Mm -hmm. The problem here, and I am asking you this because you are among the politicians on Twitter who have uh, blackened your display page, joining the protest uh, by sections of the online world against what has been called government censorship. Why did you do that? Because when you hear the secretary speak, he is saying, hang on, my priority was law and order. I want to clarify that while I have blackened my display picture on Twitter, it is not in solidarity with any other politician. In fact, it is not even in solidarity with some of the other people who have done so, but it is in solidarity with the many dozens of ordinary netizens hmm. who have been asking me, who have been writing to me to show this, uh, this protest. India's number one news app just got even better. Download NDTV's new app, fully optimized for retina display, full screen view faster response time and Sudoku, NDTV's new iPad app. Download now.